It's about that time of day again. My name is Joseph. It's already Wednesday evening, May 17th, 2017. Welcome back to your nightly newsletter. We got crude S&P, gold, euro, and DAX tonight. Crude is bullish, and this flag pattern tells us the bulls have that 50-round number in their crosshairs for tomorrow, but we need to see a good setup before buying this dip tomorrow. S&P is bearish, and after today's collapse lower, <laughs> the bloodbath lower here today, we're patiently waiting for a two-legged correction off these lows to sell more tomorrow. Euro's bullish, but we're trading into three levels of resistance tonight with a target up at the big round number. Yeah, we're watching that 12,000 on the euro tomorrow, and the plan is to look for traps at support levels on Thursday morning. The DAX is bearish, but trading at the low of a channel isn't the best place to be selling, so the plan is to look for more reliable selling opportunities up at the high of the channel tomorrow. Boy, oh boy, these markets got tossed around like rag dolls today. Got a great video for you guys. Plenty of reliable opportunities setting up for Thursday's session. Before we jump in, though, I do want to remind you, the only place to watch the full-length version of this nightly newsletter is on our blog at sidewaysmarkets.com. If, if you're on the YouTube channel right now, not to worry, there's a link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow that link in the description of that YouTube video. Follow the link. Come join me here on the blog at Sideways Markets and grab the whole, right, the whole enchilada, all five markets and all the analysis. While you're here, don't forget, join the mailing list. I'll send you an email every evening when our nightly newsletter goes live. Follow me on my many different social media channels. I'm always posting important charts, links, and updates throughout the week. Follow me on social, lower left-hand corner. And don't forget to grab those charts. How easy is that? All the charts in tonight's video, you can have them ready on your computer tomorrow, right where it says clicker to download today's charts. It's only on the blog at Sideways Markets. And then please don't forget to grab your free pass in the upper right-hand corner. Grab that free pass. You're going to learn more with me in 90 minutes on that free pass than you will anywhere else on the interwebs, especially if you're brand new to trading. Grab that free pass in the upper right-hand corner. And please don't forget, we got a great Frequently Asked Questions page. If you're new around here, and don't forget, we get a live support tool on the right-hand side of the website to answer all all your questions. Hope you guys had a great day so far. Man, it has been a fantastic, fantastic week. It's been a great month of May so far. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Well, let's get ready for tomorrow. We get some more money to make tomorrow. Let's jump right in. Tomorrow is Thursday, the 18th. Now that number should ring a bell out there for you guys. What is the 18th? Oh, yes, crude rollover. Every one month, right? Every one month, I say that because you know the S&P and the currencies, right? E-minis and currencies are every three months. Gold's every two months, right? And of course, crude oil energies are every one month. Normally, crude's going to roll over around the 18th of the month, right? So you might have been getting emails from your broker, you might have been seeing pop-ups on your software, whatever the case may be. Usually we see the we usually we see the volume rollover on the 18th. Now remember, uh, expiration has nothing to do with this. Okay, in our beginner class, we talk about the difference between expiration and contract rollover. Contract expiration isn't until next week on crude, right? So we're not worried about expiration. What we're worried about is is tomorrow when the volume is greater on the 717 contract than it is on the 617 contract. So make sure you're watching for contract rollover tomorrow. I'm going to be analyzing the 617 contract on crude oil, and we'll see if the 717 jumps ahead tomorrow. We'll see. Bottom line is when the when the volume moves higher, total volume is higher on the 717. We're trading the 717, so be aware of that on crude tomorrow. That's right, 18th of the month, 18th. Sometimes 17th, sometimes 19th, but it's usually right around the 18th. I was surprised that we didn't see it get closer today. So tomorrow might be one of those days where, where we're kind of balancing volume between the two contracts. So if tomorrow, if the volume is pretty much the same, you can trade whichever contract you want. Uh, of course, again, tomorrow in the trade room, we'll watch and see what the volume looks like tomorrow, and we'll trade whichever contract has the most amount of volume on Thursday. With that said, got that out of the way. Don't forget, we have tomorrow morning retail sales at 4.30 from, the, right, from, from Great Britain. But most importantly, will be the ECB meeting minutes tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. The ECB minutes, that's sure to get things moving and shaking for you guys in London. And then don't forget, if you're joining me tomorrow morning in the trade room, we open up at 8 o'clock Eastern time. That sweet spot between, right, where that overlap occurs between London and the U.S. session. Don't forget, 8.30 jobless claims. And we got the old Philly. Philly Fed tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. That's pretty much the big news on the schedule here for tomorrow. Again, watch the rollover. 
Watch the mini, watch those mini minutes tomorrow, especially if you're on gold or euro. And of course, come out and join me 8 a.m. Eastern time, Monday through Friday. I'll be with all my advanced members in the trade room. Let's jump right in. We got a lot to cover here tonight. What a day, what a day, what a day. We'll start with crude. Then we'll go to S&P, gold, euro. And of course, we can't forget about the FDAX. We'll wrap up tonight with the old craziness of the FDAX. Crude is bullish with a flag pattern. So the plan is to look for buying opportunities using the top of this channel. Now make sure, right, you don't get caught chasing a move higher. A lot of times these, these flags, they pull back, they spike up. We want to make sure to buy low tomorrow. The bulls are most likely hunting for that measured move and possibly that 50 round number which they missed right by a few hairs earlier on this week but they need to give us something to work with before we go buying more tomorrow now the first that stands out on this chart tonight is the flag it's a strong move up that's your flag pull and then here's your flag coming down now why is this a flag why not a bear channel it is a bear channel but when you put it in context remember everything in context Listen to the story the market's telling us. We put it in context. It's a flag. Now, a flag brings up a really, a really easy teaching opportunity. Here are two scenarios that you want to be thinking about. Here's scenario one. Price spikes up. It pulls back and then collapses. That is an example of a reversal, right? Price spikes up. The buyers try to buy the pullback buy the pullback, right? They're buying low, but then for whatever reason, right? The buyers can't hold it and price collapses. Let's now back that out now, right? Back it out now. Here's what a flag looks like. Price pulls back, price pulls back, price pulls back, right? Keeps pulling back. Buyers keep buying low, right? We find this channel. Rather than price collapsing, what happens? Jumps up, and when it jumps up, that confirms now, basically when it jumps up like this, this is when buyers go, oh, yes, now we have some proof, but we don't want to buy high like this, right? We want to buy low. So we look for a pullback and we try to use that top of the channel. Now, see the real, right, the real traders who have big, big accounts, they're scaling into it. They're actually buying into this as it comes back. This is a tough place to buy for somebody with a small account who's not willing to buy more as price goes lower, right? So you get a six-figure account and you can scale into this sucker and you've got a little bit more risk tolerance than your average trader, right? You can scale into that move going lower, but again, it's tough because it's just difficult to know which one of those pulls back, right, are going to be the one that goes up. So I always tell my new clients, right, skip trying to scale into it as it goes back, wait for that proof, okay, and then look for that dip, right? That's your money right there. Wait for that pullback. That's where that, right, that's where that big bag of cash comes out. All you got to do is just go pick it up. So the difference is, again, and this is, this is a really classic scenario. We talk about this in the intermediate class, right? Flags look like this, strong move up, and they just kind of grind lower, they grind lower, they grind lower. However, it becomes a reversal and a bear market once that, right, once that move up, grinds, grinds, usually it's twice, two try rule, and then it just mm, collapses right back down. Once we see that collapse back down, then you know it's on, right? Then you know it's on. So that's a real easy teachable moment here tonight. Again, it's a flag, right? It's a flag because what haven't we seen? We haven't seen the collapse yet. Price goes up, right? Pulling back once, pulling back twice. Now, this is where typically, again, one, two, try. This is typically where we see the market now react, right? We don't want to chase after that. So if it does give us that reaction, we then will look for that breakout, pull back, and try to use, right, that trend line at the highs. And don't forget, all right? I'm not going to say we can't go lower here, right? Wait for the collapse, right? It'll show you some good strength. So how do we play those two scenarios? Well, the first one would be as the price jumps up, rarely do we get just a perfect pullback. Rarely does this thing pull back to the moving average and everything's just peachy keen, right? Nothing but nothing but uh, you know blue skies and rainbows and right that that rarely ever happens, right? If it does, take a picture because you're probably not going to see it very frequently again in the future. What usually happens is, is we usually see some sort of trap. It usually traps, and again, we'd like to use the top of that channel if at all possible. Most of the time though, it'll also line up with a trend line here of some sorts, right? A little two-legged pullback, a little trap low, right? To buy low, go up back to retest the high, right? The objective course 
is to retest the high. Another scenario, right? You may see something like this, right? Goes up, pulls back, so let's try to sell it, and it's a failure, right? A failure going back up. The bottom line is the objective right now for the bulls is to get back to retest the high at 49.5. If they can get back to retest the high, they'll probably get the measured move, right? And again, if they get the measured move, don't forget, most measured moves will double top. So if for some reason you can't find a way into the move right on the way up, don't forget, it'll usually pull back and give you a double top, right? So you can buy it on the pullback as well. Now, as I get closer to that 49.65 area, we start looking at that big round number. So if things do start getting crazy tomorrow, right, we'll definitely be looking for that move up to that big round number. What about the opposite direction? How do we go, right, how do we sell it? You know, how do we sell it? Well, first of all, we'd have to see that collapse, right? It'll have to collapse. Now, sometimes it goes like this. Sometimes it goes up, and then it collapses from there, right? So, again, you know, we're not going to blindly buy it if it goes higher. We're going to wait for the trigger. So, again, right, either up and collapses from there, or it just straight collapses back down. Whatever the case may be, it collapses. It turns bearish. Now, what I really want to see is whenever a trend changes directions, Okay, for example, in this case, it's a bull market into a bear market. I then, I then always go looking for a two-legged correction. Two-legged corrections are usually going to be the most reliable way to sell high because think of it this way. When the market gives up on the bull side, it'll snap lower because the buyers are taking profit and they become sellers. Right? The bulls become bears because they're simply getting run over, they're getting stopped out, or they're taking themselves out of their position. The pendulum swings so far to the bear side that it's going to want to correct to allow sellers to sell high again tomorrow, right? So that'll be the plan here, right, is to really try to find a trap high, try to find that two-legged correction, right, to sell high if it does collapse, right? And if it does collapse, you know what they're hunting for, yep, all the way back down to that 48.03. Now, remember, if we do get contract rollover, this is the 617 contract, go to the 717 contract, right, and, and trade that the numbers will be a little bit different but it will be ultimately the same chart and again as i always remind you right if you need help with this i'm going to be with you guys tomorrow morning in the trade room as for, with all of our advanced members so don't forget to come out and join me for that as well so we talked about the bear side we talked about the bull side uh that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the idea here for tomorrow don't forget today was inventory day and a lot of times we see inventories send this price up just to get it to collapse back down the problem right now is we got to wait for that proof here and I, I think everybody right now is going to be interested to see what happens tomorrow because obviously right we heard the opec production cut on monday we almost had that that nosedive they pulled out of that nosedive this morning as we talked about last night on the newsletter this bullish move is not a huge surprise it was inventory day now we want to see do they roll over was this enough during inventories or we get a pound back higher here for that 50 round number we shall see and we have a plan no matter what happens t tomorrow how about some s&p s and is just a just a little bit bearish here tonight. I should have known last night on the newsletter, right, as we were watching that thing collapse last night, right, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. You know, like I said last night, though, um, as soon as we saw the bears hold that pullback, you know, we knew this market was bearish. So, you know, obviously would have loved to have been selling up here, but in a range-bound market, I mean, what are you going to do, right? Wait, wait for it to turn bearish. There was plenty of opportunities to get short on this today. You know, that's, that's, that's one of the great things about being a trader is if you miss the first one, just stay patient, right? The trades are like buses. The next one coming right around the corner. Just got to stay patient. s and is bearish, clearly, and trading at a triple measured move. And the first thing that stands out in this chart, where's the correction? Exactly. There hasn't been anything for the bears to sell high. So the plan is to look for selling opportunities using a two-legged correction up into resistance levels tomorrow. The sellers are most likely hunting for that prior month low, which is a pipe dream at this point. So avoid the temptation to chase this market lower. Stay focused on selling those corrections. As you can see here, kind of follow the, right, follow the bouncing ball here. One leg, two legs, three legs down to that measured move. Now, remember what I said earlier, most of the time we get a measured move, what happens? You're going to see a bounce and a double test, right? Very, very common. Now, that top right there, that becomes pretty much the line in the sand where all the sellers are going to be waiting here tomorrow, right? So assume we don't tumble lower here tomorrow, and obviously something got under the skin here of the S&P here. This is obviously not typical, right? But obviously your sellers are going to be waiting up here. 
right? So sellers are waiting up above that swing. Think of it almost as a trading range, right? Think of it almost as a spike and a range, which we're going to see a couple of those. Guys and gals, it's been great to have you with me here tonight. I always appreciate you guys sticking around here Monday through Thursday evening on this nightly newsletter. Don't forget, if you're on the YouTube channel right now, in the description of the YouTube video, there's a link for our blog where you can find the full-length version of this newsletter. There's also a link that will take you over here to the website at schooloftrade.com. If you want to learn more about how we trade here at SOT, join that free trial. You'll learn all about the patterns, the setups we use here at SOT, and please don't forget check out the beginner, intermediate, and advanced levels of membership. We have a place for everyone, whether you're brand new and you're a beginner, we'll build that good foundation in the beginner course, right? We'll add in the technicals in the intermediate and we'll get together and trade those setups, right? And pull the trigger in our advanced course in the trade room every day at eight o'clock Eastern time. Excellent week so far. We get another big day tomorrow. Hope you guys are ready for it. I'll see you guys in the, in the trade room at eight o'clock Eastern time. If not, same time, same place. Tomorrow night on the newsletter. Adios, amigos. Bye for now.